Today we're going to be recording this meeting. So I've just started that recording for us. And at the end of this uh, presentation, we'll be sending out the slide deck so that you can have it for reference. And also our contact information will be available. My name is Rich Shockley. I'm the center director of the Highland College Small Business Development Center. Pon uh, Sivong Sai is one of my colleagues who works with me at that center at Highland College. And then also with us today is, is Giselle, who's going to be helping us with the chat box and kind of facilitating any questions that we might have at the end of today. The format that we're going to work through is we've put together an update on the CARES Act and the Small Business Administration loans. And we're going to walk through that. It's probably going to take us 15 or 20 minutes. And then we're going to open it up for any questions that you might have. And if we don't know the answers to all of your questions, we'll do our best to get those answers and get them back to you. These programs have been changing uh, really every day, and we're getting clarification on different items, but we'll do our best to give you some clarity and let you walk away with um, some a good understanding of how you use these tools. Our program today is really uh, sponsored by the Port of Seattle and the Small Business Development Centers. And we wanted to bring this to you just to help you make decisions for your business. So we'll go ahead and get started. And again, this is a, an update on the CARES Act and the uh, Small Business Administration loans. And now I'll see if I can advance this slide. There we go. So today we're going to cover the EIDL and the PPP loans. Those stand for Economic Injury Disaster Loan and the PPP is the Paycheck Protection Program. We're also going to look at the Debt Relief Program, an update on that, and other SBA programs. And then we're going to have a discussion on relief for sole proprietors and independent contractors. So let me start with the update. The EIDL and PPP both began uh, or were offered it towards the end of March. But as of April 16th, both of those programs ran out of money and stopped taking applications. As of April 21st, Senate did approve $484 billion for small business, and that's headed to Congress for approval and then to the president for signature. Of that money, about $310 billion is going to be um, applied to the PPP to open that program up again. And about $6 billion is going to be applied to the EIDL. And that'll be broken up about $10 million in the EIDL loan advance, which converts to a grant. And about $50 billion will be available for loans. challenge the SBA ran into was that there were just so many applications that came through in those first few weeks that everything got everything got shut down um, but now that with the with the funding coming back available they hopefully will be processing these applications again in about three to five weeks is the period of time um, after application uh, the, the ones who did apply in first, in the first uh, round of funding, they started to receive um, money around April 10th. And with the PPP, that one is a, a program that was worked directly through banks. That started slowly as well, as, just like the EIDL program had. Uh, again, there was so much volume that the individual banks had a hard time keeping up. But we did see money starting to come through the banks on April 13th. I want to clarify these two loans, or these two, um, yeah, two loans, because they come in from different uh, sources. The EIDL is applied for directly with the SBA, and the money comes right from the Treasury. And the PPP, you make application through a bank who is a 7A approved lender, and the funding would come through them with a guarantee from the SBA. When these programs open up again, it is important that you, you apply quickly, especially with the PPP because it's going to go fairly, fairly rapidly. Um, there is an 800 number listed here and also the link 
for making application to the EIDL program. The EIDL is going to be, when they determine the economic injury and the loan amount, it's going to be amortized over either 15 or 30 years. And if you are a for-profit business, that rate is going to be at 3.75. If you're a non-profit, it's going to be at 2.75. And the payments are going to be deferred for, for one year. Processing time is about three to five weeks. And with the with the EIDL, there's they break it into two categories. If the economic injury is determined to be $25,000 or less, they are not going to take any collateral. It's going to be an unsecured loan. If it is over $25,000, they are going to take available collateral. And that's going to be collateral that is in your business, so like equipment. They will not secure it with real estate simply because they don't have time to go through the deed and title process. The EIDL is a personally guaranteed loan and it's there's specific um, uses for this loan. It can be used for things like payroll or general expenses or accounts payable. You can use it to for lines of credit or bridge loans and also in some cases to return deposits that customers might have made to you. The EIDL cannot be used to pay down long-term debt or to make any capital purchases like plants or equipment or anything like that. Economic injury disaster loan advance is uh, the one we talked about earlier. There's gonna be about $10 billion added to this um, section of the uh, idol. But these are emergency funds. It's an advance on the loan and it's $1,000, up to $1,000 per employee, up to 10 employees. And the advance will be automatically deposited to your bank account. And its its purpose is to get to, it, get to you more quickly than the loan will. I spoke with a business yesterday who applied for the EIDL um, shortly after it was open. So probably about two and a half weeks ago, they just received their funding, uh, the EIDL, the EIDL grant, and they did receive the $10,000. They had just over 10 employees. So this, these funds can be used for most operational expenses. And there's a couple of restrictions, and we'll talk about that a little bit later today. And as I mentioned, this first advance does convert to a grant where the rest of the EIDL is a loan, um, pay, deferred for, payments are deferred for 12 months, and then it will be amortized over either 15 or 30 years. The other program that we're going to talk about is the uh, Paycheck Protection Program or the PPP. And again, the applications for the PPP, they're going to open up again as soon as these funds are, are finalized. And the, the funds are going to be limited and they probably will go fairly quickly. The, to give you an idea, the first allocation for the PPP. Uh, was about $348 billion. And that went in just a few weeks. This new allocation that's been proposed, there's going to be about $310 billion. So I would assume that it's going to go fairly rapidly as well. So again, uh, be ready to apply for that. These again are made through 7A lenders, SBA approved lenders. And we've provided a link where you can find uh, some of those lenders. We recommend that you go to the bank that you work with. Uh, some of these banks, because of the volume, have restricted any taking any applications unless you're a customer of the bank. And some have even restricted it unless you have some kind of a debt uh, program with them, a credit line or a loan. So we'd encourage you to reach out to your, your banker first. And if you can make application there, we'd recommend that. If not, there's some other alternatives. Um, if you already have applied for these loans, for one of these PPP loans, we encourage you to reach out to your bank and make sure, just kind of check the status. You should not have to reapply, but we're still waiting for some final definition coming from uh, the government on this. There has been a new avenue to make some of these applications, and it's through some portals that have been set up by Intuit, by Square. PayPal and, and Cabbage, and there might be a few others. These are FinTech companies. They already had online portals set up for the work that they were doing. 
And so there are some banks that are actually using their platform to accept applications as well. Now these loans that are coming through the FinTech companies are going to be just like the loans that you might get from a, from a 7A bank. In fact, these, these companies have been approved by, by the SBA to be 7A lenders for, these, for this program. So again, some of these are, some of the FinTech companies are continuing to take applications. And as soon as they have noticed that funds are available, they would notify those applicants. The overview of the Paycheck Protection Plan is that it provides up to eight weeks of payroll costs, including benefits and taxes. You can also use it to make uh, mortgage um, payments, uh, rent, uh, rent payments on lease uh, agreements for or utilities. Um, one thing I wanted to point out if it's related to mortgages, it's only the interest portion on the mortgage that these funds can be used for. They won't let you use these funds for the principal portion of a mortgage because that's an asset that you're actually purchasing and the government can't fund that, that purchase on your, on your behalf. They can take care of the interest portion. And again, these are obligations that were in place prior to February 15th of this year. With this loan, all of the loan or a portion of it can be forgiven if certain conditions are met. And we'll touch on those in a little bit. If you're an independent contractor working, or if, if you're a company that has independent contractors, you cannot use your independent contractor um, expense to count towards your payroll that your employees, that you pay for your employees. And, and we'll go into this a little bit more as well, but the way that this, that the PPP loan is determined, it's based off the payroll in the company. So again, independent contractors can't be used in that calculation and they can go apply for the PPP on their own because they're considered a business. The loan amount is going to be two months of your average payroll plus an additional 25%. And they want to make sure that up at least 75% of these loans are used towards payroll and 25% can be used again on mortgage interest, rents, and utilities. This uh, this PPP does have loan forgiveness, and the way you would do that is you would go to the lender or whoever is servicing the loan and request that loan forgiveness. So there are no prepayment penalties, and there are no fees to apply for this loan. There's no collateral required, and there's no personal guarantee required. This, this particular uh, program, the PPP, is being funded and guaranteed by the SBA. Some items you need to watch is that borrowers, we, you will owe on the loan if you decrease your FTE headcount or if you decrease the salary and wages by more than 25%. That would apply for any employees that are um, up to $100,000. And you have until the end of the eight week period or until June 30th of this year, whichever one comes first, to restore your full time employment and salary levels. And again, this is the, for the period that between February 15th and April 26th. That's the, that's the um, payroll and headcount period that they're using to evaluate this, this program through. So again, to clarify, you have to return to full-time equivalent headcount as you had prior to February 15th in order for the PPP to be forgiven, and you have to make payroll for those eight weeks. When you request the forgiveness, some of the documents that the banks are going to require is going to be proof of the FTE headcount. They're going to want to see the pay rates. They're going to want to see any payments that are made for rent or utilities or mortgage interest. And I would encourage you to also speak to your, to your bank or whoever is going to write this loan for you and see if there's any other documents they're going to want. These banks have some control over documentation that they need to apply, so they're probably gonna have some requirements on documentation they wanna see for forgiveness as well. You're going to, as the, as the owner of the business, the bank is gonna have you certify that 
the documents that you submit are true and that they're correct and that you are used that you use the money the way it was supposed to be used they're going to have you sign an affidavit as the owner stating that you use it properly if any of these funds are used um, fraudulently then the federal government will pursue criminal charges if for some reason a portion of this loan was not forgiven then it does convert to a to a short-term loan it had have an interest rate of one percent and then the payback period would be over a two-year period but for the first six months there are no payments required interest does accrue again but no payments are required in that first six months the other part of the cares act is the small business debt relief program and that applies to sba backed loans the 7a loan the 504 loans micro loans but these had to be in place prior to February 15th of this year. This debt relief will not apply for any of the new idle or the PPP or other disaster loans. And the way that this debt relief is going to work is that the SBA is gonna make payments on these loans, both principal and interest, and they're gonna make that for the, they're gonna make those payments for six months, beginning on the payment after March 27th of this year. And you want to check with your SBA lender to make sure that that is in place. This was supposed to be automatically put in place, but again, there's been some question on the banks, on the side of the bank, sometimes how this is done. But the SBA has submitted some language and, and clarification to the bankers on just how they're supposed to process these loans so that it doesn't, so it's not going to hit your credit as a negative non payment. They're gonna take, take care of the paperwork on their end so that that doesn't appear on a credit score. And again, the SBA is making those, those payments for the next six months. Let's talk a little bit about the sole proprietors and independent contractors, because I know that's a big question for many people there. Um, so first of all, the idle loan is one option for sole proprietors or independent contractors. And when we put this together, we were saying it may be too late to apply, but that's not going to be the case in, in my opinion now. The, um, again, with the relief that's coming out, there's been a number of dollars allocated uh, to the idle loan. Originally, the idle has put out about, six, put out about $9 billion in loans and the new allocation is up to $60 billion. So they're about six times what the original amount was. And that's partly due that to that this idle loan can be accessed um, not just one time, but a, a other more uh, one or two additional times if you need to. You can make application through the end of this year. And the way that that would work is you would amend your application and the SBA would require some additional documentation and then they would get, again would determine the economic injury and extend additional funds if they deem it appropriate. The PPP is another option for independent contractors and sole proprietors, but you'll need to specify certain and supply certain documentation for that. We'll drill down on that a little bit more as well. And then the other part that we want to talk about today, again for sole proprietors and independent contractors, is that through the CARES Act, they came out with a pandemic unemployment assistance. And so um, typically sole proprietors and independent contractors are not eligible for unemployment, but they have put a new uh, plan in place where they can also apply for unemployment. This just recently came out, I believe it was uh, April 19th was the first date that um, independent contractors and sole proprietors could file for unemployment. I also want to kind of spend some time today talking about the definition of an independent contractor because it's going to define how you're perceived in these loans and what kind of funding is available. So from a federal income tax um, and, a, and a FICA perspective, all earned income would be paid into, all, the, all your income would be considered as federal income taxable and, and for FICA. Um, if you're a W-2 employee, these um, taxes and Social Security are deducted when you receive your paycheck. 
if you receive a 1099 statement for your business, you're considered to be an independent contractor and, and uh, social security and taxes would not be withheld, but you would be, um, it would be your responsibility to make payments on those either quarterly or at the end of the year, depending on your income. And independent contractors, a 1099 worker, they would need to have a license with Washington State. So we've touched on these a little bit. Uh, if you do receive funds other than through W-2 or 1099, you're required to report all income to the IRS on a quarterly or an annual basis, again, depending on the, the size of your income. And in Washington State, there are different forms of businesses I wanna to touch on because again, these, these will determine how you're perceived in the loan process. So the typical businesses are, are sole proprietorships, general partners, limited liability companies and corporations, and that would be either a C-Corp or an S-Corp. From a federal perspective, an LLC can elect to file federal taxes as an S-Corporation. If they choose to file taxes as an S-Corporation, the S-Corporation owner can receive payment in two ways. One of it is through W-2 income, and the other one is through distributions. Now, the IRS guideline says that a, an S corporation owner needs to pay themselves a reasonable wage for the job that they're doing. That's because they don't want you doing everything as pass through income and skipping around the Social Security and Medicare portion. If, as a sole proprietor or an LLC, all profits, including owner's draws, are taxable but the owner does not receive a W-2 form. And again, we're gonna talk a, a little bit about the tax forms later because that's what they're going to look to for a sole proprietor and an LLC to see if you are eligible for some of these programs. So let's look at the idle and a Schedule C filer. Under the current guidelines, both the idle and the idle advance can be used to cover earnings of an independent contractor or a sole proprietor. As a sole proprietor, you, you will be filing at, at your federal tax return, you'll be filing at a 1040 and a Schedule C. The Schedule C portion defines your business income, your business expenses and deductions, and then the net on that is gonna be the income to the sole proprietor. The idle advance can also be used, we mentioned this earlier, can also you can receive up to ten thousand um, dollars, and it's going to be based on it based on employment. The idle loan, um, it, it is a loan. There is no forgiveness on this one. It's three point seven five percent. Sole proprietors, independent contractors, really need to decide if they want to get this loan to replace their lost income. And if you use the idle loan proceeds for your owner income, that will impact the usage of any funds you might get from the PPP. And you may have to refinance the idle into the PPP. There was some clarification that came out from, let's see, it was from the uh, US Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship. <clears throat> Excuse me, and they did make a statement that says that um, if you use your PPP to cover payroll for an eight week covered period, you cannot use a different SBA loan product for payroll for those same costs in that same period. Although you could use it for payroll, not during that period or for different workers. So again, it comes, what they don't want you to do is get a, get a loan from IDLE, get a PPP loan, and it's, it, they won't let you use those same dollars for payroll for that same period and the same headcount. So we really gotta manage, manage these closely. independent contractors and sole proprietorships. Um, I've already touched a little bit on what they're going to look to to determine eligibility, but with limited liability companies who've elected to file as an S-Corp, again, the owner is gonna receive W-2 wages, and those can be included in your PPP payroll calculation. If an owner was paying themselves $100,000, for example, and they were paying themselves 50 of that on W-2, and 50 of that through a 
through just a draw or a distribution, the only amount that they can use in the calculation of the PPP is the 50,000 that was tied to that W-2 wage. The distribution cannot be applied even though owners often use it as income, but the IRS looks at that as discretionary profits in the company. And again, these loans aren't to replace any profits. If the business does not file as an S Corp, again, as a sole proprietor, they're gonna to look to the 2019 taxes or the last year that they were actually filed. So that might be, that was probably 2018. And in the Schedule C, they're gonna look at line 31, which is the net profit. Again, for the independent contractor and sole proprietor, they're gonna take that number on line 31, they're gonna divide it by 12, and they're gonna multiply it by 2.5, and that's gonna be the size of your PPP loan. That'd be the maximum size that you would be eligible for. If you had additional employees with W-2 income, that would be included in the calculation as well. For businesses with multiple partners or owners who make over 100,000 or who use the idle for payroll, there's additional details that might impact the, the loan amount. And we've touched on some of those. Again, you can use it in different, for different periods and for different employees. And the, the $100,000 is the limit. Uh, anything, any compensation over $100,000 um, is not allowed in the calculation of these, of the PPP loan. Washington Unemployment, as we mentioned earlier, has opened up to independent contractors and sole proprietors. And this was part of the CARES Act. And each state has handling handling their handles their unemployment differently but here in Washington state it's been used to expand benefits to the self-employed and it's also provided increase in weekly benefits of up to six hundred dollars above the state determined uh, minimum or the state determined amount and those are going to uh, stay in place through the end of July I believe it is they've also extended the benefit period from 26 to 39 weeks which will take you pretty much to the end of 2020. The CARES Act um, with Employment Security is active and live now. It started um, April 19th, spoke to a business owner um, uh, just yesterday, and there's quite a wait to get there. The, the system isn't as responsive again because they've had been hit really uh, with a heavy load of applications. But their in, uh, employment security is encouraging us to, uh, to do a couple things before we apply. And those are to uh, obtain an employment security account. It's called the SAW login or Secure Access Washington. Many of us probably already have these. Um, if you're buying your car tabs online, you might have one. If you, to make your business application or, and pay any taxes, you're gonna have one. So um, make sure you have an employment security uh, login. And if you don't, you need to go through the process and get that, um, get that assigned uh, prior to this. You also want to go through an application checklist, which they provide on their website. And they also have an eligibility tracker so that you can estimate your unemployment. These are all items that they recommend to do prior to applying. You want to get your application done correctly the first time so it'll go through more quickly and smoothly. If it, runs, it has problems going through or if there's incorrect information, it's going to slow it down quite a bit. This is a map of our state showing the different offices. It's got our, our website, uh, wsbdc.org, and then contact an advisor. Again, you can look and see an advisor in your area, and you can reach out for assistance. Or they'll have a phone number and an email. And then my contact information and Fawn's contact information are here. And you are uh, welcome to reach out to us, ask us any questions, and let us know how we can, we can help. Giselle, why don't we um, open it up for any questions if any came through? Yeah, so um, I have a question here, and I think it's related to the, um, the forgiveness of um, the, either the IDLE or the PPP loan. Okay. And the question is more of um, 
So how will that relate to business and transportation where much of the capital is tied up with vehicles such as trucks um, and taxis? Okay. Um, so again, the, the only loan that has forgiveness is the PPP and that's strictly based on payroll, but the idle can be used for transportation businesses um, where you do have operating, operating costs. So fuel, um, utilities, it can be used for um, the interest portion of loans. Um, so again, it's, they're gonna determine the economic injury um, and it doesn't matter if it's a transportation or a service business or retail, the idle can be used for that. Again, the PPP is going to be harder probably because they're going to look to, to payroll either of the, of the owner operator or they're going to look for the, to the payroll of the employees and the owner operator. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Um, so our next question is more of the unemployment insurance. So can you still apply for unemployment insurance as the owner of an S Corp if you don't pay unemployment insurance on yourself? So as an S Corp, if you are paying W-2, if you're, if you're paying yourself a W-2 or at least a portion of your income, yes, you could apply, you could apply for unemployment based on your W-2 income. If you are an S Corp and taking just a distribution, you probably are not going to be accepted through employment security. But in, in all of these loans and employment security, if there's any question, we're encouraging you to apply and go through the process and let them define whether you are or are not eligible. But again, S Corp, if, you have, if you're paying yourself on a W-2, then you definitely would be eligible. Um, at the end of the year, you're going to, you're going to be paying, um, if you're not paying into it at a state level, then you pay into it at a federal level at the end of the year. Okay. Is there any, I don't have any more questions in the chat box. Um, please, to all attendees, if you have any question, please use the chat box and I can, so I can read them to Rich. And again, I just want to let everyone know that uh, Fawn and myself are available for other questions should they come up. Um, we do a lot of work as well in just helping businesses model their new cash flow, look at new um, business models in this uh, time in our marketplace. And um, so Fawn and I can help with that or any other advisors in our network as well. Giselle, do you have anything else you would like to add before we sign off? Yes, um, in addition to that, so um, we will send a copy of this presentation and also the recording once it's available because it will take some time for, for the recording to come up. So please do watch out for an email coming from us. And, and if you have any questions after this, um, I will send also the Rick and Fawn's um, email address. Okay, there's a follow-up question. So it's okay. difficult to apply for a PPP through bank because of online banking requirements. Are there any banks that you can file in person? Um, most banks that we are aware of are only taking applications through a portal. That again is because most banks have their lobby closed some of the banks that I work with, they do, um, they are set up to take appointment only um, in within the bank. But I'm guessing that all of these PPP loans are going to be just online and through a portal. Um, again, I'd encourage you to reach out to the bank you work with and you could see if you could go into the bank and they might be able to help you walk through that, that portal for that application. And there are some banks too, and I just want to add to that. Um, there are some banks who um, let you fax in their, the application form. Um, usually, it really depends on your relationship with your banker. They sometimes allow you, they will send you a PDF copy and send it back to them. So that could be another um, 
option aside from online banking? Giselle, do you have, do, do you know of specific banks that might be doing that or is it just on a case by case basis, depending on your banking relationship? It's a case by case basis and I, two of them, case to case and your relationship with your banker. Okay, okay, good. So I have a follow up question with regards to the EDI, EIDL rather. Mm -hmm. To clarify again exactly what an EIDL loan can be used for. Okay, the EIDL can be used for um, payroll, can be used for general operating expenses, it can be used for um, the interest portion of, of mortgage or debt service, um, it cannot be used to pay off any long-term debt that's already in place, and it cannot be used for making any capital purchases in a company. So you can't buy any vehicles, you can't buy any equipment. It's really just based, uh, it, its purpose is to help a business weather this economic um, problem that we're having right now. Does that, um, hope that answers the question. Giselle or Fawn, do you have anything else to add to that? I don't have, Fawn, do you have? I, I do not. Okay. Um, uh, excuse me, I, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a truck driver, I work in Seattle, and uh, I receive a 1099. I work for a company, so I guess I'm a subcontractor. I don't know if there's any way I can get some help through the, any of these loans that you mentioned, because I'm not sure if I qualify as an independent contractor. Yeah, okay. Yes, you, you do. You do qualify as an independent contractor. Um, Fawn, do you want to take that? Answer that one or you want me to take it? I'll go ahead, Rich. Okay. So as a, as a 1099 uh, contractor, you can apply for both the EIDL mm -hmm. and for the PPP. And you're also going to be eligible for unemployment. So again, um, the PPP is going to be for for your payroll and they're going to look to your tax return and they're going to determine the income basically the net profit earned from from driving driving truck and that's what they're going to be used to determine the the PPP loan amount is going to be um, it's going to be the annual amount brought in on your 1099 divided by 12 to break it into a monthly income times 2.5. So you can make applications there. You can also apply to the EIDL um, and that's gonna be uh, determined based on economic injury. So I don't know if you lease your own, or have your own truck, own your own truck or lease a truck, but they would look at other factors other than just income. And again, um, if you're not working now, you can also apply to employment security as a 1099 self-employed worker. That's open to you as well. If you have specific questions on how to do that, reach out to myself or Fawn and we'd be happy to, to work with you on that. Okay, so we have another question that came out. Um, so can you file for unemployment even if you are still working, but at a reduced rate now at the now that the economy is slow. So employment security does have a couple different programs out there. Um, I don't know if you're an employee or if you are a 1099 employee. Um, they have the, I'm gonna call it the traditional unemployment where they've got some programs called um, shared work and they've also got some furlough and they've also got some something for reduced wages. Um, it's my understanding is it's going to be based upon what your reduced hours are, um, whether it, whether you're still going to qualify for that or not. Um, if it's tied specifically to the, to the pandemic, which it probably is, they're going to have you go through the original process and then probably kick into the um, pandemic unemployment. So I, I would say, I would encourage you to apply if you have any question. I don't know the specific answer whether you would be eligible or not.
Rich, can I jump in? I wanted sure. to go back to the subcontractor, the tr truck driver. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if you have your, the, the, for the PPP program, that one, they will request for a documentation to uh, proof of your, of your wages. And your W-9 at the end of the year, that's a document that you want to submit with your PPP application. Thank you, Fawn. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions coming in, Giselle? I don't think so. Right now, we don't have any question. Okay. Well, again, um, you have our contact information. Uh, please reach out to us if we can help out. Or again, these, the link to the, all the advisors in our network, uh, wsbdc.org slash contact and advisor. Just reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to help any way we can. So I think we're going to go ahead and, and close things off for today. Um, thanks for joining us and um, let us know if we can help in any way.